His Golden Messenger is live on Austin City Limits Radio from our Dell Music Lounge here at 97.1 FM. So the show tonight at Antone's, the new yeah. album is Terms of Surrender. Uh, up until this morning, I had only heard uh, just the first single, I Need a Teacher, and I actually listened to the whole album while I was walking my dog this morning. Good time. Just and cramming it, it, for the test, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> and it turned out to be a really great dog walking record. Hell yeah. Uh, and it surprised me, based on some of the press that I've seen, uh, both on the record and on, on His Golden Messenger's you know, career, that uh, it surprised me that the record was as up as it is. It seems like a pretty, largely pretty cheerful record. And part of that surprise comes from a piece from Rolling Stone that I saw. There's a, uh, a quote from this piece in Rolling Stone. That's, uh, and this is Mike talking. I had this feeling that I could not shake that maybe I'm not gonna be around for much longer, that maybe something's going to happen to me. These tunes are in part imagined conversations that I'm having with the people that are close to me as something to leave behind, almost a last testament type thing. Has something about fatherhood elevated your sense of existential dread? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> Yeah, my mom didn't like that passage that you just read. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Oh, Michael. Oh, Michael. Are you Michael, okay? What are you talking about? Michael, what are you Rolling talking Stone about? I, I just read in Rolling if Stone. If your grandmother that... was alive right now, she would read that. But I thought of, I did think <laughs> about it some more, and it, if you think about it a bit, it comes out more like live your best life now. We oh, could all yeah. be gone tomorrow, that oh, sort yeah. of thing. Let's use that interpretation then, Chris. That's the right one. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's the right one. Yeah. Um, you know, I had all kinds of feelings making this record. It's a, um, I, ha I had my own personal travails uh, as I was composing these songs, and and um, a lot of my a lot of my friends were going through existential stuff too, and uh, you know, all of it happening um, with <laughs> uh, you know everything else in our country happening in the background. It's there's a lot of noise out there. But, um, you know, I knew that, um, so I'm kind of tripping out because I have this rug at home. It's in, my, <laughs> it's in my living room, so. It's a nice one. It's pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, as dark as, as dark as things felt, I knew that I, I definitely didn't want to make um, a record that was entirely um, in a, in a sort of figurative A minor. That's not really yeah. the kind of record that I want to make. It has know. the occasional minor key touches. Yeah, I mean, you know. but, you know, the thing, that, the thing that, um, that I've always tried to do since the very beginning, since, like, Bad Debt, really, is, um, you know, make it hard to discern whether it's a major or minor feeling song. Oh. You know, it's um, uh, because I like... I like I like the, this music to be in that ambiguous space. That's what life feels like to me. Like you know, I can be happy and sad at the same time, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, and and I want I want the music to feel that way too. You know, there's another music form that you have experience with that combines, you know, anger and exuberance, and that's punk rock. Yeah, you have a punk rock background. I d I do. It's been a very long time since I, um, I was I was in that world, but it did. Uh, you know, it did. Um, it's kind of the foundation, probably for yeah. for everything in in my life. I mean, it's a that's a real do-it-yourself, um, self-taught world. And um, it, it, it's it's as much a, a mindset and a lifestyle as is a music form. Yeah, know? I mean, it doesn't come out in my music so much now, but but it's it's still there in me. You still feel it. I still feel it. I mean, in different ways. You know, those yeah. those 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 feelings that you have as a seventeen-year-old person, um, if you're you know, kind of happy to exist on the fringes, um, you know, they also mature. They become something else. You know, mm -hmm. I I have um, you know, and um, you know, I have an incredible family. I have two beautiful little kids. I have amazing friends like Phil. Our kids hang out together. All that stuff. So, nice. you know, those the feelings of um, anger and uh, you know whatever, however I would describe the feelings I had growing up, making and listening to punk rock music. 
I still have them, but they've become more complex. And sure. you know, I, I, I like to think that I, u- I can use them productively. Is there a particular punk rock band that you would turn on a Hiss Golden Messenger fan to that may have inspired you back at that time? Well, I mean, there would be no musical, there would be, really be no musical correlation. So I could talk a lot about stuff that was a huge influence to me, but I don't know that I could tell, show uh, someone that was a fan of my music and say, like, if you listen to that, there's the key. Right. Um, but, I, you know, I loved a lot of the Discord stuff from Washington, D.C. That, sure. was, that was a big one. Um, and there was a lot of stuff from California where I grew up as well that, you know, it was, it was such, so small, such small, uh, such small bands that nobody would really know. You're truly DIY with the punk. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's yeah. how it goes. That's how it should be. Yeah. I was going to ask Phil. So, Phil, you got the kids hanging out. Did the kids get to play with your toy keyboard? <laughs> Chris, this is small but powerful. I want you to know that right now. <laughs> it's, it we sounds do, like a weapon. It's we, well, listen, we do a lot of talk around our house about the difference between a tool and a toy. There you go. And a lot of times, kids want to go for something that's a tool because they think it's a toy. But you got to remind them that that's a tool. That's that not tool, a toy. Baby. Absolutely. That lawnmower is not a toy, son. That synthesizer is not a toy, son. You need to be <laughs> careful with that thing. Yes, we do. A lot of prep. Phil actually did the ACL Fest last year as a solo artist. What was that experience like? Um, it was cool. Yeah, it was a good time. It was nice. We had a good time. I think that. Uh, I think the weather was okay. It was a little muddy, maybe. That's pretty standard for some some yep. of the ACL experience. A little swampy. Yeah, just trying to find a place to set your gear down on the grass somewhere. And um, had a nice time though. It was really fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. Very nice. I love Austin. Well, uh, his golden uh, excuse me, his golden messenger is live tonight at Antones, which of course is where we're doing our uh, first two mornings of the ACL Fest. Friday and Saturday, we'll be there in the same room quite a bit. So let's continue with the music. Y'all, we're live from the Dell Music Lounge here on Austin City Limits Radio.